Welcome to my guide on Great War Western Front. In this guide, we're going to talk about the grand map or the theater map and everything you need to know about it. There's going to be timestamps below. So first of all, uh, I'm playing as the German, so I'm taking control of the right. Up here, you can see National Will. National Will affects the measure of an alliance's willingness to continue the war. The way to affect a national enemy's uh, will is by combat or battles, and then also potentially by different events. You can also get luxury goods through research that will then allow you to buy National Will by using money. And, and past a certain point in the game, the national bill will begin to drain for both factions to make sure that the game ends before 1920, in case you weren't able to finish it before that. Let's talk about the resources we have. So we have gold and supply. So gold, you gain gold every single turn. And you can also do research to increase the amount you gain every turn. So for example, with this wartime donation, you can gain 1,200 every turn and then to 1,400 and 1,600, so you can increase this a little bit with the different uh, wartime bonds and wartime taxes research. And then you can use your gold to gain supply. Now this is going to be here, your global supply. Now let's talk about unit moving. So when you click on a unit, you can move it around. So, so I can click on Neon and, and I can click on three units and I can tell them to move somewhere, for example, down to Laon here. But uh, they have this locked symbol here because they moved. So if I were to attack, they wouldn't count for the attack. So it takes one turn to essentially react with the movement before you can use them. Now let's talk about recruitment. So if you bought the research for, for example, the air wings, you can then buy them over here. You can click on them and then you're going to be get them at your main home. So this is here. You can see this is my combat air wing over here. As for infantry, you might be asking, how do I recruit infantry? You don't recruit infantry like by yourself. You can just buy it here. You can gain it either through research. So there's some research that gives you like one time certain amount of infantry. For example, these volunteers or recruitment or trained reserves. This will give you like a one time infantry unit. Uh, but otherwise, it's essentially an event that will just give you a uh, unit. <laughs> So first of all, let's talk about how to win the game. So the first way to win the game is through War Fatigue Victory. This is essentially by taking the enemy's national will to zero. So you can see your national will up here. If there's a second way to win the game, and that's called the Conquest Victory. And this is by capturing the enemy home region. So if you're playing as the Germans like I am, you want to take control of Paris. And if you're playing by the Allies, you want to take control of Krozna. This leads me to the most important part, and that's the different how the different regions work. So you can see these different stages, and they're extremely important. So in order to take control of a hex, you need to remove all the stars in a region. How do you do that? By taking a great victory. It's very important. It's not a major victory. It's not a minor victory. It has to be a great victory. So. For example, here with Chateau sur Marne, I have just won a great victory, so they have one of their stars destroyed, as you can see over here. A region stays one turn without getting attacked, it will get their stars back up to their star maximum. So in Chateau sur Marne, the current star maximum is two. So if I were to not attack it, so I attacked it this turn to lower the star, so you can you can see that by this little symbol of this uh, fire and uh, the smoke so the smoke is telling you hey there was a combat here so it's not going to gain the star next turn but the turn after that if i wasn't attacking it it would gain its, its stars back so you really want to make sure if you're attacking a region to try to do the elimination victory to take over the hex you need to keep attacking it now obviously if you can get multiple great victories to destroy the stars that's great you can win but even if not you might want to take like stalemate attacks just to keep it under attack so it doesn't get that star back because if it gets the star back then was kind of pointless for the fight for you. Now, why would you care then about minor victories and major victories if it's only the great victory that gives you the start? Well, it's because of national will, because minor and major victories lowers national will of the enemy, and that will allow you to, to win the other way also. Also, the more star a region has, the, more, the harder it will be to capture and the more national will it will give you. Now, uh, this is really important when you're choosing where to attack because if I wanted to win against Chateau Thierry, I have to do four 
attacks to destroy their stars, right? That's a lot of attacks. For example, I only have two adjacent hexes, so even if I were to throw some miracle win both of these combats, I could only take away two of their stars, and then next turn they can send reinforcements to protect themselves and help themselves defend it. So if you want to do like surprise attacks and things like that, you want to focus on regions with only two stars. So uh, all, you also want to attack uh, regions that you can surround a lot. For example, Luneville, I can surround from three spots because I could do up to three attacks within one turn, which is really powerful. So uh, because of how the unit movement moves, I can essentially do three attacks on Luneville before they can react if I had a good off. Things that you can do in the region are region intel this allows you to learn at the region now at the beginning i wouldn't waste too too much research on this region intel because this will only tell you what structures are relevant in that area and that's not a particularly exciting information you don't really care that they have maybe a field hospital there or something like you don't really care what kind of structure they have there it's not really that important it's going to be important in later terms but in the in complete beginning on the game within the first few turns you don't really want to worry about it but later on espionage is going to be important because once you get enough we're going to be able to do like sabotage them and etc uh, i might do a different guide for that later it's just this is mostly like for the beginning and so you understand how the game works uh, army intel this is very important this allows you to tell exactly the number and type of all military units this will tell you here instead of the region total corps it will actually tell you like hey this is the kind of enemies that this have. And you would need to take this particular research to unlock it. Next up, we've got counter intel. This is uh, in order to stop the enemy from spying on you. And then we've got care packages. Care packages are really important. There's a variety of different care, pa care packages that you can get. And they allow you to do different things. For example, a care package can remove battle fatigue from the target region. Uh, or you can have a care package that increases morale bonus to in addition to battle for removal. This is very important. So let's talk about morale for a second, even though this is not like the theater grand war situation. So morale is essentially an HP of a unit. So you can see here in a press, we have region morale plus zero. So that means that all of your units will start with whatever their maximum morale is. And maximum morale is essentially HP inside the battle. And as they're fighting the battle, it can get depleted, the morale, but it can sort of regain back to that max HP. If a region has battle fatigue, which it will get if you attacked it, it will lower the max morale of every single unit in there by this battle fatigue. So using care packages and things like that allow you to increase morale means that you can increase the max HP of every one of your units and also remove the battle fatigue effect. And next up, let's talk about how does an attack work. So if you want to attack, you're going to click on a unit here and you can right click on an enemy unit. And this will tell you the number of units that you have. And if you've done some espionage, you're going to be able to, you might be able to see some information about the enemy. But because we haven't, because it's the beginning of the game, you're only going to be able to see here their total corpse and that. It, that's it and here you can see the likely outcome and your supply this is the most important thing your corpse supply is affected by the number of units that you have here and if you build some supply depots then also by that supply depot so what does this mean is that when i start the combat i can use up to 810 of supply for the both the pre-battle phase and the actual combat phase so to place like trenches artillery balloons and then for the actual combat the disposition of your unit here affects what you can build. So I can build uh, uh, these two types of infantry and a light and heavy artillery. If I, for example, had plane, so if I moved a plane there, I would be able next turn, once I get the attack, also get some light planes to... Uh, how to attack so like i said so uh, we want to attack and we want to take over a press here we have three different units around which is great and we have a chance here to get a major victory but that wouldn't give us the start so what you want to do first is you want to attack you either want to attack with a minor victory or a stalemate minor victory is better for national well so you want to do minor victory, and you're okay without resolving it you're fine so just gonna do it. You can always play it yourself to get a better result than this, but uh, can do it. Now we lost some national will because it wasn't a, a, a great victory or a major victory, but they they lost more obviously, so that's good for us. And we have to pay some replenishment costs to handle our soldiers. But 
the benefit of this is, is that now there is this fire and smoke symbol and that means that they have lower battle fatigue. Now the battle fatigue sta stacks, so what I could do is I could do another attack. This is going to be semi, this is going to be costly, but it will again give you a better chance for this to turn into a better victory. Now, because this is a major victory, I do feel pretty confident that you could probably play this yourself and just win this. Uh, as a great victory so you wouldn't have to do it this way but if for example this was just a minor victory giving them the battle for fatigue can really help so what you want to do here is you want to do a stalemate now another trick that you could use if you don't want to use a straight up stalemate is you could place a supply depot and this is going to increase your cap so for example right now my attack is just 300 so that's just a stalemate but if i place a supply depot and then my attack would now go up to 600 because supply depot allows me to move some of the supply from this global supply to the normal supply. So what I could do is I could buy this supply depot and then do an attack here. And you can see this immediately jumps it from a stalemate to a major victory. I could use a similar trick here by buying another supply depot. Obviously this is quite expensive, but again, this is the, the, the good thing about the supply depots is that they're going to stay there. For example, in other dome, it's not that useful, even though I just did it, because if I were to take over a press, then uh, no one's going to be threatening other down. So it's kind of safe. But with Lila, because it's surrounding many enemies, this is actually be a really good move to do so, because even if I take over a press, I'm still going to be able to attack some of the other areas. So you can see that I'm going to hover here. And now this is already a great victory. So I can just out resolve this. And I wouldn't even need to need that supply depot over there. But you can see how, how can the supply depot change this. So we're going to out resolve this to a great victory. This is going to increase my national level because I won. Replenishment cost is fairly low. But it, you can see that it, I, it has taken some of my global supply from here. And now I could do another attack and it's a great victory again. Why is this a great victory now and it was a major victory a moment ago? Well, be because of their battle fatigue, because their battle fatigue is now huge. It's now like, if you look at this, it's now minus 30. So now I could do this attack, get another great victory. And hey, I took over two of their stars. Oh, okay. So this is actually important. It told me a great victory, but the out resolve actually just gave me a major victory, which is really, really bad. This is why you don't necessarily want to out resolve. You don't mind out resolving on things like the stalemate or the minor victory, but even this thing, uh, this big, you would want to do it yourself because it's a really big deal whether you get a great victory or major victory. So uh, I'm actually happy that it showed me this so I can uh, show it to you like this. <laughs> Next up, let's talk about structures. We're going to go over them just very, very quickly because I might do a separate guide talking about how useful these structures are in detail. But the first thing you can build is an airfield. Airfield uh, that makes it so that replenishment of airplanes is going to be cheaper. It increases the amount of supplies granted by air wing. So this is great if you're really focusing on like air combat because it's going to increase your supply. So that means again, you can do more stuff. Next up, we've got field hospital. This is quite useful. This reduces the cost of replenishing soldiers after a battle by 20% and reduces the national will loss due to casualties by 25%. So this is another really good thing to build if you know that there is a region that you know the enemy is going to attack. For example, if uh, you can see here that they kind of have some strong units here, so they might be interested in attacking Perone. So what you could do is you could build a field hospital to make it hurt less if they attack it two or three times so that you will not be losing that much national will. And it will also make it cheaper for you to replenish your soldiers when you're going to be doing a lot of the combat. Mechanic Garage increases the supply granted by tank and reduces the replenishment of tanks. So essentially it has the same effect for tanks as the airfield does for airplanes. And uh, most of these structures tend to have like three levels, which each gives you like a better benefit. And next up, we've got Canteen. Canteen grants a base 10 morale bonus to the region and reduces the cost of care packages for the region by 10%. So it's kind of like the reverse battle fatigue for yourself. Now this is quite useful because it's kind of like, every, because every turn you attack with this area you will get that bonus. So similarly to what we talked about before, you wouldn't want to put this on Aedon RD because as soon as you take Ipres, not many people are going to be attacking this area, but Lila might be a really exciting good place to 
put it or Noin because it has a lot of enemy territory, so it's going to do a lot of attacks here, or and probably also a lot of defending. So in that case, it can be useful. The cheaper care packages are nice because with the care packages you can also increase the morale of the enemy, but the care packages only work for one turn. And then we've got safe houses. This is all related to espionage, so it'll make all of your espionage cheaper. So region intel, army intel, and counterintelligence, all of this will be cheaper. And also uh, at a higher level, it will lower the time the enemy is spying on you. So essentially if an enemy spies on you, they might be able to see you like for three turns. So you can uh, block this so that it gives level effect. And then supply depot. This I think is one of the most important stats just because it just increases the supply cap for the region. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that, of course, with the supply depot, you're taking the supply from your global supply, so it's not uh, like a just a free supply bonus, but it can be a huge help, especially at the beginning of the game, because it can really help you move through the game a little bit fast. All right, I hope you enjoyed this guide. If you did, write down in the comments. 